A superfluid can flow without friction, and a persistent current will persist forever. At its heart, this is a quantum phenomenon, which appears at low temperatures. Therefore, for a liquid to transition into a superfluid, it's essential for it to remain liquid at low temperatures and not solidify. The helium liquids uniquely have this property. How cold must we make a liquid to see superfluidity? The helium-4 atom is a boson. Liquid helium-4 will become a superfluid when the condition for Bose-Einstein condensation, BEC, is satisfied. If we estimate the, the de Broglie wavelength from the thermal velocity, we get this expression, and then the condition is the size of the probability cloud that describes the atom, when that's equal to the volume per particle, then BEC will occur. So this temperature is about 2 Kelvin for liquid helium-4. The liquid then enters an entangled quantum state. A single quantum mechanical wave function describes the whole volume of liquid. This is quantum mechanics operating at the macroscopic scale rather than at the usual microscopic scale. On the other hand, the helium-3 atom is a fermion. Liquid helium-3 becomes a superfluid by the atoms forming pairs, these pairs are now bosons, and simultaneously the pairs undergo BEC. Because the pairs need to form, this transition happens about a thousand times lower in temperature than in the helium-4 case. It's just like the he electron pairs in a superconductor. Super he superfluid helium-3 is in fact like a neutral superconductor. But the helium liquids are not the only superfluids. Very low density clouds of cold atoms in a metastable gas state are cooled on the benchtop by laser techniques to create superfluids. Because of their low density, sub-microkelvin temperatures are required. And at the other extreme, neutron stars, which are pretty hot but very dense, are also superfluid.